Okay, so we're here again now trying to sort out the electronics for the auto winding. And we've got here a relay. Uh, we've got an 8-pin relay. And it's 20-volt DC coil and AC to 20-volt uh, rated contacts. We've also got two identical uh, switches. So this switch here is a proximity sensor. It's 24 DC again. Um, it's proximity sensor. And we've got normally open. And we've also got another one which is normally closed. Uh, and then we've also got our power supply as well, which is 24 volts. And then we'll see in a minute, we'll, relay, we'll wire this so that hopefully we've got a safer 24 volts going through the switches and the two 20 volts going to the motor. Okay, we're going to be a little bit more careful now because we've got our AC lamp, our mains voltage lamp plugged in in place of the motor. Um, yet we've still got 24 volts DC running through the switches. And when we come close to the start, our lamp comes on. And when we come over to the stop, our lamp goes off. So this is a much safer system now. Um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't show it on camera, but the original setup that I originally bought was all AC. And then I realised that I wasn't quite happy with uh, mains voltage running through the more exposed switches. This way, the mains voltage will just be running through the relay, which will be enclosed in a box. Um, and then the more exposed switches will be running the DC current. Uh, but this is all working now quite nicely. So we've just got to get this mount to the clock and obviously we've got to get this connected to the motor okay not the prettiest uh, I've run out of black filament so I've just ordered some of that but just a prototype really uh, I've got a little box now which I've printed uh, on the 3d printer and essentially we've got the relay in there and the rest of the wiring rammed in there um, all 24 volts in the box other than one line for the um, for the 220 mains. So we've just got one mains cable coming into this box and the other's going directly in and then out. So these two here are the mains coming in and the mains coming out to run the motor. And then we've got the switch which starts it. And we've also got this little uh, bracket that I've printed at the moment. Um, I possibly make this out brass. I'm just conscious actually that the, I don't want the uh, proximity sensor to trigger on the actual metal itself. Uh, so again, just going to use this temporarily, but I'll think about whether I make that out of wood or even just do it again, uh, a little less rushed in uh, plastic. So we're going to fit this now and hopefully see it running. Okay, so we're back with the clock now, all fitted. Um, we've got the box temporarily fitted to the back there, not very neatly. I uh, need some new screw holes put in on the uh, actual base plate, but I'll do that when I, when I dismantle it all. We've got the stop button attached. And then looking down even further, we've got the start button attached just to a piece of wood. It's worth mentioning that when I fitted the chain system, the uh, downside of all this is that it has made uh, us need more weight on the uh, weight itself, just because I think the chain system and the counterweight is just reducing the force coming down, uh, despite me uh, changing to that bigger uh, spur gear, uh, sprocket gear, I should say. Okay, so we're going to start this system now. Let's come back down here. Um, and rather than waiting for this to initiate, what we'll do instead is we will bring up the start. And there we go. We've set that off. Come back up. We can see the uh, motor now driving. Come back a little bit. We'll see the weight being brought up. Lovely auto wind system in that force, even though the weight's going up, the force is still acting down on that main wheel and therefore the clock is still ticking no problem and then when this i mean the extension blocks anyway added weight but when those when the main weight or those extension blocks come near to that stop it will stop so really nice position now that we're in because we can leave the clock running um while we get on with some other things uh, and it, hopefully it should keep auto winding nice 24 volts um like i said on the start and stop button uh, obviously mains voltage through the motor uh, and once again i'll say um, that there's no ratchet required uh, with this motor or like i say other uh, systems identical to this that i've seen have had to have a ratchet on the motor because it starts to uh, reverse this one uh, seems to hold its position so next step now is uh, i think we're going to go for it now uh, put on this next arbor uh, which is actually going to give us the uh, hours. We've got the seconds showing there, so we need the minutes and hours now, which is a, an arbor that's missing uh, on this side. So thanks for watching. 
hopefully we'll get this running very shortly with the uh, time displayed as well.